All right, this is going to be a little video on segmenting. I use segments for bowl making for beads of courage, and it's I find the be the easiest way to use. So this is what I use. First, I start out with little boards, scrap pieces, usually what nobody wants. Um, I find that by using this kind of stuff, I get to um, it's available. It doesn't cost me anything, which is, to me is important. So this is what I use. Now, I used a lot of strips. People throw away these strips that they don't want anymore. Um, they'd leave them around. So what I do is I take them, and now what I'm going to do is resize them. They're all different thicknesses and all different lengths, but the lengths don't bother me as much as the thicknesses. This board was probably twice as long, but I like to have my boards a little smaller when working with. I don't need a big board, especially if I'm going to cut them up into segments. So I just go ahead and chop them down any which way. I don't measure. I just make them smaller. It's just easier for me to handle. And then I set my, my saw up where I can just rip them down there and get rid of if I can use a second piece, great. If I can't, then that's all I get. So then I go ahead and I'll use a smaller piece even. Uh, by using smaller pieces, um, I get, there's a lot of scrap. Now this one here is a, a board that's a little bit short, you can see. But I'll get a couple uh, pieces of segment out of that. There won't be any problem with that. Now, as I, you can see, I can rip and get a second piece out of that one also. Uh, great. And then I just push it aside and I work. Now they're going to be close, but they're not going to all be the same size. Here's a little tiny piece. Still good. I can get one segment, maybe two out of that. But you got to remember safety. I use a push stick and I'm also using an ice pick. If those of you are too young to know, an ice pick is an awe. All right. Now this one here has got a little lip because this is some kind of molding. So what I'm going to do is take that lip off. And I'm going to try to keep basically the board. I won't get two out of that, so I'm going to keep the whole thing in that length, uh, that width. So again, just rip it down, get myself ready. All right. Now again, this is just going to now this little strip I probably won't have any use for. I'll probably end up giving it to the wife to burn because she's a pyromaniac. All right, so that's done. Now I'm going on to another piece. And now what you see here is this gold on here. That's either epoxy paint or powder coating. This is terrible on a sander. You'll make you change your belts so quick. I've learned that. I'm using from trying to sand that off up oh, no butt crack there you there was no butt crack so don't get all excited so what I'm gonna do is just take a tiny tiny sliver off just enough to get the gold off because I want to keep as much of the wood as I can um, and so I'm just gonna rip it down taking just the edge of the paint off or the epoxy whatever it is uh, the saw blade is better better to do it and then I'm not even cutting actually into it I'm just cutting on the other side of it so I'll do all the sides that have gold on it in this particular case and that's there you go and that's how it looks that's black that's like a paint I'll leave that on the sander can handle that without any problem all right now once I've done that basically this is what it looks like there is a whole bunch of different shapes sizes small large longer pieces and shorter pieces now, the other part here that you're looking at is the thinner piece, all right? So, by looking at the thinner piece, you can see I, I can use that for other parts. Again, some more different shapes and sizes. I kind of got them grouped together a little bit, but I can't really say exactly if they're perfect in terms of width and thickness. Now, I'm going to mark them. So, one side gets a marking on, and that will be the side that will be up when I cut, and my first cut and my second cut I'm just going to flip it over for the mark is down um, the blade some people say is um, gives you a little bit of an angle cut uh, so if I alternate when I put them together on my cuts they should all go together better can't say for sure I noticed it but Terry Jaden helped make me this over at his place he was very helpful this is an adjustable sled 
and it actually works out very well. Um, I use it, especially when I'm using different measurements or like I'm making um, segments with eight instead of 12, because 12 is the one I use mostly. So I have a different sled for that. But this one here has come in very handy. Just put the board there and chop away, chop away, chop away. And that's how that one works. Now the one I'm gonna demonstrate on is actually the one that I use most of the time. All right, and that's this big one right here. Um, and it's cut and set for 12 segments at 22.5. All right, now here you can see I got a cutout from my hand. All right, now these are pieces that I've already done. And this may be, um, I write on them, like maybe this size here will make a four inch bowl. This one here will make a, a, four, a two inch, who knows? I don't know what it says without looking at it. But I keep them on and then I just put them up. Now my fence has a 22.5 cut already there. So what I wanna do is I wanna put my wood there. And now what I'm gonna do now is just move it just a fraction only because I'm gonna say I want this a little bit smaller than what this actual uh, size would give me. And it, again, these are just bowls I'm making randomly. There is no real size that I care about. All right, so as we move along here, what I, you're gonna see is that um, I have the wood, I have a safety guard maybe to keep my fingers away from the blade. You can see that sticking up. I have that, um, double stick taped in so if i wanted to go higher a piece of wood that's higher than we'll say that's three quarter inch board there i can go ahead and do that now there's my red line and there's my non-red line so first thing i'm going to do get my hand to the the uh, hole for i can grab everything double check everything make sure the blade is high enough all right and now i'm going to just take off just the starter end this is just a small amount i need to do just to get it off where i can push it against the actual fence that's got the angle on it. I do it one, I flipped it, I do another one, got rid of it, put it over there, and now I'm gonna change my camera angle, which I think I did a big deal, and obviously I didn't. So anyway, so uh, there is a second cut, and I just flipped it again, and I keep doing this. I do this repetitively over and over and over. This is something you have to watch. Repetitively, you can get sloppy, That uh, steel um, ice pick can get, hit the blade and where it's, it's better that it hit the blade but it's got, still going to scare the hell out of you. All right, better than my finger anyway. Now this is really nice and short. Okay, now you can see what's going to happen here. Um, I, again, I'm holding it in a safe area. One. All right, I can do another one probably. Oh, my fingers are still there, see? All right, going to do another one. And let's see, I'm going to hold it now only with the ice pick, pushing down, holding it in place, get it out of the way. And I think maybe I can get one more, sometimes I can't. And as you can see, if you can, that doesn't quite cut perfect. But since it's high on the one end, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be rounding all these off anyway. All right, now, here they all are all cut, all different shapes still. But what I have done is I segmented them a little bit. Uh, put them in groups a little bit. Obviously not all of them are in groups because that's a big old pile. But what I've done is some of them I matched up, oh, this color here, I want to go with this one. And also this size, I want to go with that size. That's what I'm, I'm doing right now. And I'll do, I'll do three checks on this in terms of size, in terms of stripes that I, I drew on, in terms of um, width. Um, I don't always care about the depth. All right, so that's Johnson's Pace Wax. can have been with me for at least eight years, if not longer. You want to do this before or after. Um, as you can see, all those pieces on the workbench are, are after, so obviously I'm doing it after. Um, I usually do this before or after my work, um, and I just wipe it on, do the same thing with the table. Um, there it is, Johnson's endorsement. They're paying for this. So I just wipe it on, let it dry a second or two. I do my miter gauge also, and now I'm gonna wipe it down. You can see I'm using a, a big rag because rags are expensive, so I use a really big rag because I'm wasteful. And then I dry, I wipe them off, all right? Now, these are then matched again in better order. 
Uh, I even did every other line on them or something. I got colors matched up better. Um, I got almost, you can see they're almost exactly in height. Uh, some are a little higher, you can see. They all come out in the wash. Here's another bunch of them. There are basically 700 some odd segments here. Way more than I normally do. But I got carried away when I pulled all the lumber out and had all that scrap laying around. And I just didn't want to throw it back in the pile, so I just kept on cutting. So I'm going to have a lot of rings. So there will be some bowls coming Ken's way eventually. All right, so there they all are, all semi-ordered. Okay, again, they're not put together, but they're just sitting there waiting for me to start gluing them up. But before I glue them up, I have to sand them just a little bit. Now what I'm doing is taking the fuzzies off left by the blade. You can see it's quick, it's boring, but you can see it's quick, it doesn't take long to do, but I do it to each segment. Just give a little rub down, get rid of any fuzzies that are there. Even if I don't see them, I'm just doing them. I'm doing them all. And again, I look at them and then now here I might line them up a little bit different. Uh, this is another check that I'm going through. By doing it this way, I feel I got a good idea of order. Okay, that is my band clamp, our uh, hose clamp. Uh, I use them, put mine together. Now again, I'm checking. Lines up on one, not up on the other. I'm looking to see if they kind of are the same height as much as possible. And sometimes I go back and forth and I grab one from another pile. Um, so this is what I'm doing now. This will take me only a couple of minutes to do, but I put them inside the ring knowing that they're going to fit. And then I don't have to worry about, oh, I got to go get a bigger ring quick. I'm half glued up. I know they're going to fit. Okay, so I got to go get my nut driver because that's what I use to tighten them up with. That plastic is what I use to glue on because glue doesn't stick to it. After, I after I'm done, I take it and just wash it off with water. All right. So now I just gave it a little tight, everything's good. Now I'm gonna glue. I use a gluing method, basically called the friction method. And there it is, a little rub there, and put it down. A little rub, and I, I line it up a little bit because it's gonna start a hearing. But I go through the whole thing. I do one side, rub, hold, move it around. Um, I don't work, I'm not getting particular. Again, I'm looking to make sure everything is the way I want it because here's my last chance, all right? So this goes on for 12 times on this particular ring. So take a sip of coffee. I use type on glue. I use type on one. It's the cheapest out there um, in terms of good glue. Um, you can probably even use Elmer's white school glue, but I use this. My rings have not come apart unless I drop them. And I have dropped them. Concrete floor and a ring that's just separately by itself is not good. The rings themselves are, are basically weak, but once you start stacking them one on top of the other, that's where their strength comes in. But they, I haven't had them come apart as I handled them, haven't had them come apart while I put them together and run them through the sander. This is my last one. I do both sides, all right? Then I do a little rub on one side, just for it doesn't drip down too much, rub on the other. Then I grab my band clamp or my hose clamp, which is kind of already waiting for me. Give it a little bit of snug up by hand, and then I tighten it up. Now I I, I don't tighten it all the way yet. I just tighten it snug enough where I can handle it. Because what I want to do is one, make sure all my points on the back end or the outer end are connected. Sometimes they may be a little loose. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to center my hose clamp on my wood if I have to and, down to and it's a double check of everything my bottom side will probably be my flattest side especially if I have different sizes but I got one good size to start with on my sander now I tighten them up and away I go I'll give it a good tug and I go put it sit it to dry and it will sit there for a couple of hours longer whatever I do about usually eight what I'm doing now is I'm cutting down my boards to size for I can glue them together. This is for my bottom or the base ring that my segments will sit on top of. So these were cut in all the same, we'll say size, six inches, seven inches, whatever it is. And now I'm just running a, a edge on them. And then what I will do is I will flip them over and do the other edge. 
That way I know they'll glue together good because I seem to have a pretty good saw blade and a nice straight cut. I don't need a joiner. They will actually glue together pretty good. And this is just crap strap, you know, scrap wood. There's nothing special about this wood. It's not expensive. Of course, all wood is now expensive. But So here's how I glue them up. I put a piece of wax paper on this elevated piece of stand I got. Okay, I put the two together that I don't want. Okay, I'm going to take a little glue and run a bead down the edge of one board. And again, I'm just going to do a quick friction rub. Put them together a little bit. Okay, reach back. I'm going to put three clamps on them. And first, I'm just going to give it a little bit of an easy clamp just to hold it together. If anything slides a little bit, I move it around a little bit like that. All right, over here, move it. And then the, and I'm, I'm pushing the edges together. I know you can clamp them together and you can take it out. As uh, long as they're close, my sander's going to take them out and make them all perfect. So I'm not particularly worried. I'm not getting involved with extra C clamps holding them together. I'll give it a little bit of tightness, take it, and put it somewhere else to dry. And then there they are. Now here's my rings all done. All right. Now what you're going to see here is basically a frantic acting person, it looks like. Uh, it's a shell game. I used to be in a carnival, and this is what I used to do. Uh, moving things around, left to right, this pile goes here. What I'm really doing is sorting all the little, the sizes close together that are almost together. That way there, when I run it through the sander, I only have to raise it up for the pile I'm doing, and then I, as I get to a certain level, then I can add the next size up that's meeting it. But it looks a little like... What the hell is he doing? He keep putting them in different piles, moving them back and forth. He doesn't know what he's back and forth. He's checking sizes. And it does look a little nuts, but that's what I do. And it seems to work. I just, it, it's not perfect. Of course, when I go to a center, I might have to raise them up, raise them down a little bit. Eh, who knows? But uh, here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get them in somewhat, somewhat level, almost the same size. Now, one of them may have one sticking right out a little higher than the, all the other 12 of 11 of them, but that's okay. I'll work it out. I'm just getting close. I'm checking. Okay, I'm getting happy. I'm getting done. Okay, that's what we're looking like. All right, and these are, happen to be all my little thin ones I'm showing you. They're kind of together. All right, and then the rest are a little bit thicker. All right, so now they're all ready for the sander. Okay, now there's one ready to go. It's, you can see I'm not worried about the inside being bigger than the other, and you can see my red line and my not red line. That's why I glued them together. Here I am on the sander. Now I, I have found that I can work three pretty good without breaking any. Breaking any would mean, oh, I lost track, and if one falls off the end of the table. So I don't do any more than three. Um, don't ask me how I know, but I do know if they fall down, it will break. Okay. So back and forth, I do three, then I drop it down one sixteenth of an inch. They're all done now. So what I have to do now is those boards that you saw me glue up before, this is my base. There's my famous, I love my circles. Got a spot in the middle to mark my center spot. That's 7.5, that's the outside. I also have to mark it at 5.5. That's the size of my face plate. So I put a little mark in the middle for the center. That's going to be my outside. All right, now, once I do my inside, I can put my faceplate on the mark. So first thing is, I made a five and a half inch uh, circle. That's where my faceplates are going to go. But I got to put some double stick tape. Get the, the tape from Ken Walston from the other from the, uh, the Sawzall Club. And I just put it on. I just press it on a little bit by hand. Slice it off for a little bit. I don't want to. Okay, turn around. So what I'm going to do is this is going to go on my five and a half inch circle and will be somewhat centered to my seven and, or and a half or whatever the outside edge is, which I will cut off. All right, here's another one. I got one um, Nova ring and I got a, a regular faceplate chuck. I use them both. I usually do two bowls at a time just because... I do one ring at a time in each bowl, and when you do one ring at a time, you're done really quick with one ring. So then you, you know, like, okay, what do I do another one, and then I go on and do another project. I got a couple different projects always going on, uh, but once that's done, 
Now what I have to do, I've got to get the edges so I can see, and they're overlapping there. So what I want to do is I need to cut away the edges so I can take that faceplate and put that on my five and a half inch circle line that I drew. So I just have to kind of take a scrap piece of wood here, because it's not good to do this on the table saw, and I'm just going to slide that around and slice off all that extra. And there's my, where I keep my junk. I wipe my hands on my shirt after a period of time when the shirt is just totally disgusting. That gets thrown away. Uh, the advantage of working for the Red Cross, my previous life, was lots of t-shirts. All right. So once that's done, I have to remove the outer layer of the tape. All right. And I use my little Zacto knife for that too. And I'm just going to get right between the two layers and get the sticky part out all right a little push there okay and then i just gotta try to be just try to get it off and it does it comes off usually what i do is i just lift them all up just a little bit I don't take one totally off yet until I'm all done. Then I pull off all three, get them out of the way. Get them on my board. Find my five and a half inch mark there. Get it centered pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want to get it somewhat right. Give it a little press. There we go. Okay. Now over here, I'm cutting off the seven and a half inch edges just to make it easier on the, on the lathe. Um, sometimes I do it with the chuck on, sometimes I do it with it off, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's still the seven and a half inch circle, uh, and the line is still there. So I just chop that off, um, to bring it over to the lathe. All right, now, there is my glued up, but I'd like to make sure they're going to stay on, on the lathe. So I put them in a clamp, and I just go around to all sides, just push, turn it, turn it, turn it, till I'm all done with that. And then I go on and do the other one. I just like to get a little extra grab there. I haven't had any fly off. So this method seems to be working. The face plate is smooth and sanded after each use. So uh, now I'm going to put it on the chuck. Okay. Nova. All right. It's going to go on. Now what I'm going to do, I could glue a ring on this already. It's not perfectly round. But I like to, because I'm anal, I guess, I'd like to make it all Pretty, pretty round first, not bandsaw round, but lathe round. So I'm going to go ahead and put my face shield on, and I'm just going to get, again, this doesn't take long because it's pretty round already. Start it up. I usually go about 1,100 RPMs. That's my speed I seem to be comfortable with. It seems my saw does, or my lathe doesn't seem to mind it. Um, I do use my left and my right hand when I work. I've taught myself to do both. All right, so there it is. It's all ready to go. It's looking for its first ring. All right, so there's my ring. Put it on. See how it's going to fit. It's going to look pretty good. Okay, looking pretty good there. Got my little extra risers up there. You'll see why in a minute, especially when I come on the clamp. Okay, again, this is the part that's going to hold everything together. This is my glue joint. Just I just usually run a bead down like that. All right. And then because... Terry Jaden says, yeah, try this. He found this method out. I throw a little salt, a little fine salt into onto my glue. Just a little pinch there, a little pinch there, a little pinch on the floor, a little pinch in my mouth. Okay. And then I take my, my bottom and I just kind of friction it fit, get it in place. Again, nothing's perfectly round yet. I mean, it's pretty good, but it's all going to get done on the lathe. I put another ring I made on top because I want to be able to put these clamps on. I don't want the clamps to go on my actual project because I'll just end up marring them, which I have done. So I come up with this method of extra rings made out of plywood, and then I hold it because it's going to tip and weight-wise, and then I'm going to put the other ring on. I use basically a total of eight clamps. Uh, four and four, four on one side, and then I flip it over and do four on the other side. All right. And again, 
you can see I'm, I'm catching my scrap wood. That's what I, I don't want to get it on my project. Now this I'll let sit for a couple of hours, if not longer. It depends on the time of the day. Depends on what I'm going to do. All right. And that's it. Then I go ahead and I make the other one. All right. And let that sit aside. All right. So once that's all done, now I need to base, get it on the lathe again. That's All right. So here it is. You can see it's not perfect and on the inside. It's not perfect on the outside, but it's ready to go on the lathe and I'm ready to do the famous Nicholson bottom. You don't know what that is yet? Pay attention. All right. So put it up on the chuck. Get ready. Uh, all I'm going to do now is just do the outer edge first. I'm going to just getting a little... I'm going to actually start with my shape. The bottom one's going to go a little shallower, uh, a little at an angle. And I'm just, I'm not going to do a final cut because it changes as I go along. I just usually go the way it is. Again, I'm just going to do a little, a little trimming. Just to get, I'm going to get most of it. It's going to almost be almost perfectly round. But if it's just a fraction off, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect where it meets right now and where the two joints are but that's where I'm at okay so I'm gonna do a little bit more I use my left hand again and I use my right hand taught myself to use both hands in case one of my hands go bad I'm thinking negative alright so I'm just gonna trim it off a little bit I was told to go from the outside in for I don't get a big splint or a big splinter or a big cut and then I'm just going to smooth it down just a little bit. Uh, get some nice small shavings. And then, I'll, so there it is. Now I'm ready to tackle the inside. What I'm going to use with the inside is a, well, first I'm going to mark it. This sometimes this gives me a visual of where, you know, where I definitely need to go. Because th that changes as I look around. I say, oh, a little bit more, a little bit more. But it's a visual. So that's my square edge carbide tip and I'm just going to dig in just a little here a little bit more a little bit more until I get all the segmented parts joined where the joints are at an angle all perfectly round and this is what I'll do all the way to the bottom but I will not go all the way to the bottom I won't hit the bottom just in case I'm going to get a kickback on that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my carbide round tool all right, and I'm going to make, I'm going to start for the Nicholson bottom. The Nicholson bottom is where the bottom part meets the side piece, and it doesn't have anything to do with making uh, dados or tenons or joints. I'm just going to curve the outside first ring into the bottom ring, and I'm going to make a nice little round indentation so it all meets up very nice. Uh, and I use the round and I just dig in. Now here's the top angle of that. Uh, it's mostly done now, but I need to get that bottom a little bit better. So here it is, me doing it again. Uh, and I also, when I'm doing this, I've also made a dent in my bottom, of course. So now this whole bottom has to get flattened out. And that's what I'm going to do now. Sorry, it's not the best cut, but this gives me where my bottom piece meets my first ring without any hassles of lining up. Now this is about six or so rings in. That's where I'm at at this point and it's gluing up. And again, I do one ring at a time. When I come back, that ring won't take long to do. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to work on my top. Okay, so I want my top to be somewhat smooth the same way it's joined together uh, with the glue joints. Um, now I just want it based somewhat round uh, because I need to make this fit onto the bowls that are done. All right. All right. So there, my tops are done. Okay. Uh, I've taken the bottoms off from the face plates which I'll show you in a minute how I do that. Uh, but now, the again, I did my five, seven and a half inch circle, my five and a half inch circle, because I have to be able to get this faceplate on. 
All right, so now it's on the bottom, ready to go. The, oh, I'm sorry, the first place uh, was this. Okay, so now I'm ready to do that, but I got to make my indentation for my lip for my, my bowl. All right, so I use the easy wood carbide tip, and I'm just going to dig in, and I'm going to take a little at a time because I want to make that lip that's going to fit over here. A lot of stopping on this, a lot of starting, a lot of stopping, all right? But uh, it's nice that we can have a looser fitting bowl, which is what they need, because you don't have to be like super accurate. I mean, you can have a little bit of foul up, but if you do too much, your your lid is gonna be really sloppy looking. It's gonna, it's gonna slide off the edge when they put the lid on, and that's not gonna look good either. Okay, so once that's done, there it is, that's my square. Get my blades from Arizona Carbide, which is, Ron is a member of our club also. All right, so now what I have to do is I have to make my, my inside of my lid, which is what's going, I'm gonna reverse it onto my chuck. Right now I'm on a chuck, but I'm, that's the, it's holding the top of it. This is the inside or the bottom. So first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna mark it around two inches. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that's what my chuck size is going to be. And the other reason is I have a, a little button I'm going to put in there that's going to cover up the screw hole that's going to hold the handle on for the kids to lift up with. Some of my bowls don't have handles. They have outside edges. I do it different ways. Again, this is my mood or whatever I feel like doing. All right, so it's about two inches. So I've got to give myself a little bit of a mark here to work with. The tool I'm using is a kind of a pointy tool. I don't know how to sharpen it anymore. I've lost my actual look for it. It used to make a good angle cut in. So now I'm just struggling along with it until I screw it up even worse. Um, but what I want to do is I want to make my starting cut for a couple of reasons. One is that's a nice sharp edge in the, and then I'm going to take my spindle gouge, which is what I use entirely to this whole process uh, for cutting out, well, the edges and all, but now I'm just gonna do a draw cut and I'm going to get it close, but not exactly, because if not, I'm gonna hit that edge. I know I will, because I've done it, all right? So I'm gonna bring it in about, maybe it's an eighth in deep, I don't know. That's a flat, um, slanted uh, edge tool. I don't know what the hell it is. Uh, I use stuff, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, again, I'm just a hack fooling around here. All right, so I get my little angle in there for the uh, dovetail. My button fits in, I'm good. All right, once my button is in, now what I'm going to do, put that back, I'm going to just give it a quick round over on the edge. I want the, I want the edge to flow a little bit with the bowl. Right now it's a square cut in, but so I'm just gonna take my uh, chisel there and I'm just gonna round off that edge a little bit for it has a nicer look to it versus a flat square sit upon look and you'll just see what I'm doing all right so now that's rounded over enough to my liking but I'll double check it and see I might have to do a little bit more that's only the bottom part of that now what I'm doing here is I'm marking because it's dead center I'm marking where I'm going to put my screw hole because I'm going to screw my top into that. A little bit of sanding on this. I won't bore you with that, but that's now's the time I'm doing the inside of the lid. All right, so out of sequence, but this is how I get my, um, using a chisel, I take my face plate off my double stick tape on any part, my boxes or my lids or anything like that. All right, I love the faces I make, huh? Uh, all right, anyway, uh, so what I'm doing is just laying the flat of the chisel down against the good part of my wood, uh, my good lid, and I'm gonna give it a little tap, not a hard tap. I'm gonna move it again a little edge, another tap here and there. Doesn't take much. Uh, once I know it's gonna come off, I take it off. 
but the lid looks good. I didn't dent it or anything like that, or else I'd have to do more work on the lathe. But I do have a recess there to work with, and I take my double stick tape off. Later on, I'll sand this down a little bit, make sure there's no residue on it, uh, make sure it's still flat. Have to replace them every once in a while. All right, so now I got to take my bowls, and they had lines on them when I originally made them. So what the bowls have to be is the bottoms have to be sanded a little bit. I do that with a hand electric sander. I use that mat just to protect it a little bit. That mat's been with me for, Jesus, seven, since the 70s, and it's still holding up, and it's still, still a little dust there, huh? Okay, so all I'm going to do now is give it a sanding down just to get rid of the lines, make it smooth with the rest of the... Um, the rest of the project. It was sanded, of course, on the uh, sander, but I want to get it to a, a better grit. So I'm using these buttons. I think uh, possibly um, Bob Erickson brought those in at, at the drop at one of the uh, parking lot meetings. So I said, oh, these are perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a little hole out of the center for the beads of courage button, and I'm going to screw that to the lid on the other side with a screw. All right, so. Showing the beads of courage button is going to go right on the center. So what I have to do now is I got to make sure I, I poke a hole somewhat in the center. Yeah, I could be off a little bit, but I'm going to poke a hole in the center. And what I'm going to use just to hold it in place is I can just have a little jig here with different sizes. Go. Oh no, I got to go get something else. Uh, excuse the wait. I didn't edit this properly but I'm gonna go get my punch that I use to punch holes with and that's on the other side of the lathe all right got the punch now I got the little doohickey that's just gonna hold it in place when I drill the hole and also when I mark it so it kind of just keeps me from making sure everything is somewhat straight that's the part that when I bring it over to the drill press I want it to be straight so I just get find the center and give it a little Push, pull, punch for the drill bit to follow. All right, now I'm going to bring it over to the drill press, and I'm going to drill a hole in that, and I'll just slide that down to a different hole that's going to hold it in place, or else I'll use a pair of pliers to hold it uh, because I don't want it spinning. I can't use my hands. It's just too close. I won't be able to grip it. It's going to slide, but uh, so I, I have to probably use pliers. All right, so now I'm over at the drill press, and I'm in the hole you can just see me bad camera this man there but you can see what I'm doing I'm just taking a Foster bit I'm holding it down with a adjustable wrench or pliers and I'm going to drill a hole to fit the button as Ken says the buttons aren't perfect in shape sometimes you get some that are a little bit bigger a little bit smaller but this drill bit I use seems to work most around that's what it's going to look like all right so now I've drilled my hole to the bottom. I run my screw through, and then I take my little doohickey, whatever that a little handle there, and I'm gonna screw it up through, and then later on I'll glue a little button in there. And I'll just cover up the drill bit, and it says something like, made in Tucson by John Nicholson, something like that. All right. lids are different so each lid goes to its own baby all right so what I use now is I usually do about three coats of wipe on poly and and in between I with four ox steel wool in between each coat and then I let them sit overnight to dry now they're all done here here's a couple other oh there's a horse I made um, quite a few years ago in the back but um, you can see uh, the ones that I made just recently that were on camera and a couple more and there's another one that is not a beads of courage box that has a little bit of a southwest design put on uh, there's the bead button in and we're gonna get a little closer up look here of the Nicholson bottom it's hard to see it's hard to tell uh, but it does kind of curve in there is no joints there there is no um, indentations it's just flush and that's what I like so there's that all done all right there's another I'm just gonna give you a couple different views 
All right. All right. Now, remember those thin pieces I had? Okay, those thin pieces come in handy for making maybe a little design. I could put them in between, which I have done, but also like on this one here on the right, I made a little top lid lip for it. That's all. That's what the thin pieces of woods are usually used for. In between are on top. There's a squ square beads of courage box. All right, that's Kent going to get next Saturday. Uh, now, you got to have your tools sharp. So this is how I sharpen them. I have a two inch depth in the back. I slide my Wolverine holder in place, drop it down. That's two inches. Lock it in place. And since the screw doesn't hold as well with the handle anymore, the handle slips, that's where the vice grips would give it a little snug. And I, in the beginning when I was first turning, I wasn't sure if it was me doing something wrong, the tool being dull, so I really had to learn how to sharpen it because then I could eliminate the possibility that, it, well, it is me, it's not the tool. And that's what I've done. I've taken the tool and I've did just that and I round it over and I get a, I think they call it a sweep back on my bowl gouge, which I use almost entirely because I'm a Jim Beeman taught. And I used, and there I just take it off. And that's my gouge, which is like I said, I use for most everything. Not a good picture here I'm showing you, but I think I am. All right. And that's all, folks.